Hi everybody and welcome back. I hope you're all well and strong. Particularly, I hope you are emotionally strong today because if you're British or anyone else who likes and loves the British monarchy, I think this will be the most important video I have made to date and you have watched on the royal family to date. So before I start, I want to ask you one favor, and that is not to click out or stop listening when you hear me mention or talk about King Charles, because it's not what you think. And you really have to hear me out, because this video is going to explain a lot, and you have to be aware of what is happening around you, politically and otherwise. You have to be able to understand why our world and our future is changing. And ultimately, you will have to pick a side. Not my side or someone else's side, but which side of the fence you want to live on. I also want you to know that I know full well that my opinion of Charles, William, Harry, Biden, Ramaphosa, Sunak, Oprah, Arnold Schwarzenegger or any other famous person politically or celebrity does not make one little bit of a difference. I'm not about my own ego or having to be right all the time. But what I am bringing you today is not my opinion, not about whether I like someone or not, not about whether I agree with something or not. It is not about any of that, but it is all about what is in the media, what is flashed in our faces and why and by whom. So hold on to your horses because I'm working this from the end backwards to where it started. If you had listened to my videos of say the past week, you would have heard me say a few times that there are things I don't understand, that I cannot wrap my head around, that I am frustrated, etc. One of the many things is why Meghan Markle, after all her ghosting of people, her greed, her narcissism, and all of her obvious lies, is still being given platforms to speak from, and still being paid to do so. Some of you had reached out to me and told me that you feel the same because if you treated your employer or ex-employer the way Meghan treated the or still treats the royal family, if you had talked or slandered your employer or ex-employer the way Meghan slandered the monarchy and royal family, you would have had a court case and an interdict against you ages ago. So why is she allowed to continue without repercussions? Then we have Harry. Why all the stories about his book? Why are there stories that the royals fear his book? Why did he have second thoughts and started running scared and wanted to remove certain things from the book? What could potentially be so bad? that he himself suddenly feared putting it out in the public domain. Now, many people prefer to stay blind and ignorant and prefer to think that Harry knows nothing and that Harry will just lie to make the book more salacious and interesting. But you have to be pretty naive or dumb to think that Harry knows nothing. I don't care how stupid he is, I don't care how jealous he is, how angry, it does not matter. He is not a complete certifiable moron who can't read or write or have an opinion of his own. And he grew up wandering the walls of those palaces, his father's homes, he saw 
and heard things said about his mother, father, grandparents, uncles, aunts, and staff. Children hear and know more than we think they do, because children tend to blend into the background. I have heard of many instances where the children find out about, say, affairs before a spouse does, because the parent tends to think, oh, he or she won't understand, or they will forget, or they won't tell. But boy, oh boy, they do. Children are the biggest manipulators on earth. I found out about one of my late husband's affairs from my six-year-old daughter. And let's not even go into that. But suffice it to say, my husband thought if he just treated the woman normally in front of the children, they won't think anything of it. But children have a sixth sense, a nose for trouble, better than any bloodhound. And not for one minute do I think Harry was any different. So, suffice it to say, I 100% believe that if he wanted to, Harry could tell you stories about the family and the palaces which would shock most of us. I do not even think that one book would be enough to capture it all. So then, an already disillusioned, angry, jealous Harry met Megan, a narcissistic, angry, jealous, delusional woman who continued to stoke the fire, who took his recollections and used it to convince him that he had a terrible life, a terrible upbringing, and that he was even more damaged by it than he really was. Okay, so, so far, I think 99% of you who listen to me and subscribe to my channel agree that that is likely how everything went down and how and why Harry landed himself where he is now. But now we have a situation. Harry's mother had passed away. The person who had empathy with Harry and who understood him is no longer. His grandmother, who was a stoic, stabilizing force with a lot of common sense, is no more. His grandfather, the stricter, no-nonsense, disciplinarian is no more. And now his father is king. And Harry? Harry is now without an anchor, adrift in a sea of confusion. I can hear you chorus, oh rubbish, he's just an idiot who fell for a grifter. No, no, no. We all have some kind of anchor. And most often, we do not even realize it until we lose it. When I was a child and teenager, it was my maternal grandmother. When I was angry, sad, or having trouble at home, I knew Omar Hess would fight in my corner, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of anything. As I grew older and into adulthood, my father was the one whom I could phone when I wanted to know how to put something together or even if I wanted to know what type of bird it was that I saw. These two people were my common sense gauge or meter. And throughout our lives, we will have a person or a situation, it can be even your job, to keep us grounded or anchored. Harry does not have that now, and it makes him vulnerable. Not vulnerable in the sense of being hurt and falling into a heap and crying, but vulnerable to exploitation. And that 
is the third important thing I want you to remember as I take you through the steps towards a very dangerous and nefarious situation staring us right in the face. And we are so blind that we did not see it. So just a quick recap. One, Harry was disillusioned with the monarchy before he met Meghan. Then he met Meghan, who fueled his concerns, anger and jealousy. Two, Harry has knowledge of the royal family and everyone surrounding the family that you and I do not have. Three, Harry is now vulnerable to exploitation because he no longer has the common sense sounding board discipline of the monarchy as an institution. And now we need to pull it apart and dissect. Harry and Meghan may not be thriving as much as they imagined they would or as quickly as they thought they would. But neither of them are down and out either. Harry does seem to be drifting aimlessly a little, but at least superficially and on the surface, Megan is rising and moving forward inch by inch. You and I may hate to acknowledge it, but she is. Yes, I read that she does not even interview all the people in her podcast herself. But does it really matter? The fact remains that each person who appeared in her podcast gave their permission for her to use their voices and their words. And each person who appeared in her podcast has her own fan base or her own niche in which she is liked or respected, whether you or I know them or don't know them, whether we like them or whether we don't like them. The fact that they agreed to appear in Megan's podcast means something. Each of them is a notch in Megan's belt. Does it matter whether Megan and Harry paid for the awards they received and for the one they will receive in December? No, it doesn't. It is another notch in Megan's belt and it is stacking up. It is now also a fact that Megan will soon revive her social media presence, her lifestyle blog, The Tig being one of them. A variety of upper class resorts, retailers, designers have already been informed and invited to feature their goods and services. Megan is bulldozing her way through every obstacle in her way and although she's not making the progress she wanted to, she is progressing towards her goals little by little. And this brings me to the how, why and who. How is she doing it? Why is it happening? And who is making it possible for her? And more importantly, why are they doing it? So add that to the list as number four. And another quick recap. One, Harry was disillusioned and unhappy. Two, Harry has knowledge of things within the royal family and monarchy. Three, Harry is now without an anchor. Four, Meghan is rising from her hiatus as a royal. So now we need to leave Harry and Meghan for a while and jump across the pond to Britain. And here is where I need you to be brave, grit your teeth and hear me out. Because to understand where I'm taking this, 
you will have to, and here's a trigger warning, it is going to be hard and tough. But hang in there, please. So, while there are all these disingenuous but flattering articles and voices coming out singing Megan's praises, the same is not happening on the other side of the pond. Now take note, I am not, not saying any of what I'm going to mention on the next list is true. I'm only listing and pointing out what the media is putting out about the royal family. And I'm sharing with you what I'm being told. And God knows whether the people are telling the truth or what their motives are. So while Megzi is getting all these glowing complimentary headlines, it is not the case for the royals on the other side of the pond. On the contrary, and here to prove it are a few of the headlines I picked up on over the last couple of weeks. Now, the screen is clear, so I do not have to read the headlines to you. Do I believe everything I read? No. And even if I did, it is not the point I want to make in this video. The point is that while more and more positive headlines are coming out about Megzi Daisy, whether those are true or not, more and more negative headlines are coming out about other senior members of the royal family. So, for me, at this point, it is not about what is true and what isn't. I have my own opinions on each, but never mind. But it is about whether this is a targeted attack or not. And if so, why and by whom? And I needed to know. So I put together a map, a brain map drawing lines between people on the other side of the pond to people on the UK side of the pond. And then when I stepped back and looked at what I had, I nearly fainted because the picture that emerged had a central theme. And you are not going to guess what or who but when I tell you, you are not going to be surprised. And as I take you through my findings, everything is going to make sense. Everything. And in a way, without even considering this or thinking about things this way, I predicted all of this when I said more than once, that Charles's reign will be damaging to the institution of the monarchy when I said that he had way too many skeletons in his closet. Too many things that those who oppose the monarchy could hold against him. And I said that without even thinking of the most damaging and most obvious thing that could hurt Charles and the monarchy. And that then brings me to the theme of my brain map. And that is Diana. Diana, Diana, Diana. Everything else are side issues. Diana is the reason. Diana is the cause and the effect of what we are seeing happening to Harry, to Meghan, to Charles, to Camilla, and ultimately, if the king does not find a way soon, and if he is not extremely careful what he does, what decisions he makes, it will cause the downfall of the monarchy. Now, don't run off because I'm going to take you on a journey through my map. 
Okay, so let's hop back to Meghan and Harry and back to the United States. Who have we seen supporting Meghan and Harry? Who were the most prominent people supporting them? Well, let's start with Serena Williams. Serena Williams was the first guest on Meghan's podcast. Serena is wealthy in her own right and is married to a very wealthy man with his own strong views on many issues. Gail King. Gail is outspoken, has strong views on many issues, has friendships with many other rich and influential people and had been Team Megan from day one and most notably is Oprah's best friend, Oprah. Megan had been Oprah's foot in the royal door, so to speak. Oprah is mega rich and has many influential friends. Remember, we are not talking about who we like or don't like. We are sticking to the facts without factoring in our own opinions, choices or prejudices. Oprah's friends and connections span those in the media and political spectrum, whether we like to acknowledge it or not. Tyler Perry, rich, somewhat influential, and he has been friends with Oprah for a long, long time. And Elton John. Elton John supported Harry and Meghan from way back when. Remember, he allowed them to use his holiday home, fly in his private jet more than once, and most recently, he even displayed photographs of them and their wedding on a screen during his concert. But what else do we know about Elton and the royal family? Elton John loved Diana. Yes, they had a falling out, but we all fall out with those we love, but don't stop loving them. One can say many things about Alton John, but regardless, whether good or bad, he loved Diana, and he wasn't blind to her faults either. So, it was more than hero or idol worship. It wasn't a romantic love either. It was a friendship and real love. Even while they were not on speaking terms, Alton still worried about Diana and was concerned about her and told his friends about his concerns for her. And then, once they reconciled, they did not have enough time to make up for that lost time as she died shortly after. In the years since Diana's death, a lot has been scrubbed and many stories are no longer available online or elsewhere. But some articles or scanned copies of articles are still available if you know where to look. And I want to read an extract from one such article dated September the 2nd, 1997. And I want to read it to you because it explains exactly what I'm getting at. Okay, so it reads, But another newspaper, The Independent, says people do blame Charles in a way for Diana's death. To some it says he is a marked man. A marked man for the failure of the fairy tale marriage. A marked man for his long playing dalliance with another woman. A woman who at the time was also married. A marked man for the chill and the stiffness he affects. And a marked man 
who is the most visible symbol of a most dysfunctional royal family. Nevertheless, people took sides. Some blamed Charles for the end of their marriage, and some blamed Diana, Pimlot said. There may be some feeling that if they were still married, it wouldn't have happened. And now they're talking about the accident. Most people think Charles behaved worse than Diana in their marriage, said Ian Hargraves, editor of the New Statesman. People take sides in such things, and the British people seem to have taken hers. So, although you won't find anything on paper stating that Alton John blamed the then Prince Charles for his friend's death, most people who know Alton John know that he does in a way, and that he feels exactly as stated by Pimlot and Hargraves. And those who know Alton John also knows that he did not always approve of Charles's upbringing and conduct towards his sons. And due to his loyalty to their mother, Alton John had always been some kind of figure in their lives. Non-intrusive, quiet, but having them know that he was there if and when they needed them. Well, William may not have needed Alton, but Harry did, and Alton John stepped up when he was needed. In 1997, Alton John opened up to Oprah in an exclusive interview about his friendship with Diana, and to this day, anyone can ask Oprah which royal she most wanted to meet and interview. And she will tell you, Diana. In the mid-90s, Oprah tried many times to get an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Diana. At the time, Diana did not feel comfortable giving that interview, thinking that Oprah only wanted to boost her ratings. But who knows what Diana would have done a few years after her divorce. Maybe she would have eventually given that interview because Diana by then also knew how to use the media for her own benefit. And without the royal family, Diana could have used the exposure to benefit her own charities and projects. But we would never know because Diana died. Okay, so from Alton to Oprah and from Oprah to Gail King. Gail did not attend Harry and Meghan's wedding as a guest, but she went to London to cover it for CBS. Gail also attended Meghan's baby shower in New York and Gail was invited to Windsor Castle to get those first photos of Archie. Now, guess who else Oprah and Gail are friends with? The Obamas. Guess who Meghan tried to emulate on her return to the United States? The Obamas. Now, who else? Well, Tyler Perry. Oprah and Tyler Perry had been friends for many, many years. Not only friends, but they also partnered in business on a few occasions. And it is said that it was due to Oprah's influence that Tyler Perry offered Harry and Meghan his home. Now, what do Elton John, Oprah, Gail King, Serena Williams and Tyler Perry have in common. Fame, money, media and influence. When Meg's it happened, just like with Charles and Diana's divorce, people took sides. And whose side do you think Alton, Oprah, Gail, Serena and Tyler took? Already influenced 
by Diana's death and the ensuing stories, when poor Harry told Oprah how his daddy cut him off, how somebody in the royal family commented on Archie's potential skin colour, how the royal family denied their half-black daughter-in-law mental health treatment, etc. The deal was clinched. Of course Harry stood up for the Queen and Prince Philip and said it wasn't them, but he did not come out and say who he really blamed, did he? But by implication, he could just as well have come out and blamed everything on his father, the now King Charles. He has actually indicated it often enough so that he can just as well come out and say it. Daddy cut him off. Daddy never had time to give him a normal upbringing, take him for bike rides and so forth. Daddy did not protect him and made him walk behind mommy's coffin. Need I say more? Well, I can. Daddy did not take his calls. Convinced yet? So, here's the clangor. I think all these obscure articles slamming Charles, Camilla and William are the forerunners for what will be in Harry's book. That is, if he did not manage to get it out and cut out of the book, which I don't think he did. I think Harry has or had regrets after the Queen's passing, particularly because of whatever issue arose with Meghan during or after the Queen's death. With Meghan no longer being in his ear as much, he no longer has that soft place to fall. But now he is between a rock and a hard place. Not only had he signed or co-signed deals with Netflix and Spotify, but he seeked sympathy and help from the likes of Alton John, Oprah, Tyler Perry, etc. And now he can't back off without losing face and losing credibility. So guys, I think we are in for a rough ride over the next few months. I think that unless Harry backs down, we are going to see severe damage done to Charles's reign. And I cannot see how Harry can get himself out of this situation. He had been properly played and the likes of Elton John, Oprah and her friends may finally get the revenge for Diana's death through her son. Do I personally feel it is warranted? No, I don't. I think there is a lot more to Diana's death than meets the eye. But not for one single minute do I think Charles had anything to do with it. He is far too emotional and far too staid, etc. I also do not think that he is in any way responsible for her death otherwise. Had Diana still been 21 or even 25 at the time of her death, I may have said that Charles led her or pushed her to her death. But at 36, Diana had grown up and had herself been round the block once or twice. So, if Harry, like me, believed that there is a little more to her death, then... He is barking up the wrong tree and blaming the wrong person. Talk to me about the BBC and Martin Bashir. Talk to me about the incompetence of the French doctors who attended to her. About mistakes made on the day and night 
of Diana's death. And yes, I'll gladly go down that rabbit hole with you. I may even argue along when you come to me with Prince Philip's fear that Diana could destroy Charles and ultimately the monarchy. But as much as I don't like Charles the man, I think I have also studied him enough to say with 99.9% certainty that he does not have the stomach to orchestrate something like that. And that, as far as his marriage was concerned, I am of the opinion that he should not have married Diana at all and that he did not do right by her. But at 36, Diana had grown up, had started to overcome her problems, have carved a niche for herself, had gained confidence. And except for her children, who now had to split their time between their parents, I think the divorce was the best thing that could have happened to Diana. But that is me. And I was indeed a Diana fan. And I still don't particularly like Charles. Never have, not before Diana or after. And likely I never will. But I'm not stupid either. However, I'm not saying that people who do indirectly blame Charles is stupid either. Remember, their belief system is influenced by other things like power and greed, friendships and associations. And I do firmly believe that they would derive a measure of pleasure and glee from the downfall of Charles. Long discussions and interviews where the one would try to be more right than the other, all those see, I told yous, would rake in big bucks. The new movies, the new TV series, the new books, the downfall of the king can rake in big money for all these movie and media moguls. And it would give them a new platform to highlight the evils of the white elite. As much as I like salacious gossip as much as anyone else, I am hoping and praying that Harry recognizes that his truth is not going to be used for the good of man, but instead for the exact opposite. At this point, with even more salacious stories in my inbox than I showed here via newspaper headlines, I truly fear for Harry, because once he has helped destroy the monarchy, his head will be the next one on the chopping block. Okay, guys and girls, so this was once again a long video. <laughs> but don't worry, in the coming week, I'll be bringing you shorter videos again. So until then, please take good care of yourselves. Bye.